All right, this is the public meeting for the 2002-22 Community Development Block Grant application. Uh, it is March 4th, excuse me, March 3rd, 2022 at 12 p.m. Um, I'm County Mayor Stephen Chambers. I'm at the Trousdale County Courthouse, 200 East Main Street here in Hartsville, Tennessee. Um, we did give notice of this meeting and also discussed it at the County Commission meeting on Monday night, give date, time, and location of this meeting. I'm currently the only one here. Uh, I do have Ms. Faye Leonard, who has been assisting us with this application process so far from Vantage Consulting. She is on uh, participating by phone. Uh, she is able to answer questions if anyone shows up and has any, uh, but I'll go ahead and read uh, <clears throat> the specifics of the program. Uh, Trasler County has an opportunity to apply for grant funds available through the Tennessee Community Development Block Grant Program. The purpose of this hearing is to assess the community development needs of Trousdale County and to solicit comments from citizens regarding the possible filing of an application for the CDBG funds. The application deadline is scheduled for April 15th, 2022 with notification of successful applications anticipated during the fall of 2022. A CDBG application must meet one of the following, three following national objectives. One, principally benefit persons of low and moderate income LMI of at least 51%. Two, elimination and prevention of slums and blight. Three, elimination of conditions detrimental to health, safety, or public welfare. This means urgent need or immediate threat. Most applications are based on benefiting 51% LMI persons LMI status is documented either through census data or by conducting a target area survey. All, CDB applica all CDBG applications must fall into one of the following categories of eligible activities. Housing rehabilitation, sewer system improvements, water system improvements, community infrastructure, community revitaliz revitalization, public health and safety, Public health and safety categories include items such as ambulances, fire trucks, and turnout gear. Water and sewer system applications must be limited to systems with 2,500 residential connections or fewer. It should be noted that water and sewer line extensions are not eligible categories for FY 2022. The maximum allowable grants are housing rehabilitation is 500,000, plus 25,000 three-star bonus. Water and sewer system improvements is 600,000 plus a $30,000 three-star bonus. Community infrastructure is 600,000 plus 300,000 three-star bonus. Community revitalization is 600,000 plus a $30,000 three-star bonus. Public health and safety is 600,000 plus a $30,000 three-star bonus. Community revitalization and public health and safety activities that are eligible only, excuse me, that are for equipment only, such as ambulance, fire truck, turnout gear, et cetera, are only eligible for $400,000 plus $20,000 three-star bonus. The match rates, each city or county that applies for CDBG funds is required to pay a portion of matching funds. The match percentage for Trousdale County is 24% of the total project cost on all categories except for housing rehabilitation. There is no match required for housing. The state utilizes a point system in ranking CDBG applications. This, the, this criteria includes community need, project need, project impact, and economic development. In addition to the above criteria, project feasibility, and project essentialness are criteria for community infrastructure, revitalization, and public health and safety projects. In closing, it should be emphasized that CDBG program is very competitive. Not all applications are approved, and for example, only 62%, excuse me, only 62 projects were funded statewide in FY 2022. Uh, I will now open the meeting for questions or comments, and for Ms. Leonard, who was on the phone, 
there currently is still no one here at the public hearing. I think you can be heard, but I'll repeat it. Um, uh, working with Ms. Leonard and we're also working with uh, other departments of the county, we look through some of the eligible expenditures such as water and system, water system improvements. Uh, we do not meet the requirement of the 2,500 residential connections or fewer. We actually have 3,000 residential connections, so we're not eligible for that. Uh, sewer system improvements, we looked at that. We had a system project that we submitted for the last round of CDBG and it did not score well and currently it seems that the Tennessee Department of Environment Conservation is wanting all those projects to be put towards American Rescue uh, Plan funding uh, so those currently are not scoring very well and you can correct me if I'm wrong here Miss Leonard but we also looked at some of the like fire trucks and ambulances and all that stuff but since it's countywide not to a specific part of the county, uh, there was some question that we didn't meet the low and moderate income standards. Am I correct? Uh, yes, that's correct. It would have uh, required a total uh, countywide survey and that at this point it didn't seem uh, possible to get that complete. Okay. To meet the eligibility. Okay. So in going through the eligible uses uh, and discussing it with Ms. Leonard, we came to the conclusion that the housing rehabilitation is probably the project that would score the best for Hartsville Trousdale County. And we did pick out a specific area that is kind of west of the courthouse. So it's west of the main part of downtown and it is going up the hill towards the ward school. So this will include residences on Morrison Street, Greentop Street, Foxhall Street, uh, Gregory Street, Hall Street, Wilson Street, and I believe also in, over in oh, Parkhurst. Those are the areas we looked at. Uh, we did a search with the assistance of the property assessor and looked at properties that were owner occupied as rental properties are not eligible. Using that, we did narrow down. Um, I don't know, I think it was probably close to 20 and 25 properties that may be eligible for this housing rehabilitation grant. And I believe as we go forward, they still have to meet other income requirements and other requirements. So not everybody that is one of these identified residences is gonna be eligible. Um, that is my understanding, Ms. Ms. Leonard, you can correct me if I'm wrong on that or elaborate any further if uh, you feel that's necessary. run through the eligible projects and uh, our process to narrow down what we thought would be our best uh, e best effort to go forward with or best application project. Miss um, Leonard, there's still no one here but myself. Is there anything further that we need to do? No, I believe that you have covered everything that's required to be discussed at the hearing, so I think uh, you can uh, adjourn the meeting. Okay. Well, given that we had no turnout and no one submitted any other projects, uh, I'm gonna recommend we go forward with the housing rehabilitation project. And if we could move to the next step, which I believe is putting out an RFQ for a consultant to be the grant administrator, am I correct? 
Yes, and the uh, housing rehab inspector. Okay. We'll, we'll get those letters to you just shortly. Okay. Well, again, seeing okay. there's, yeah, there's still no one here, so I think we've covered everything. Unless you have anything further, I'll go ahead and close the public hearing. Okay, that's, that's all for me, and I'll speak with you later. All right, thank you very much, Ms. Leonard, for your assistance. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. So again, still no one here. I'm, so as I'm the only one here, and I think we have an agreement on what our project's gonna be, I'm gonna go ahead and close the public hearing. Uh, if anyone was watching online or if anyone watches this later, if you're interested in any information on our efforts as we go forward, we'll try to, once we get to a certain step, uh, we'll do uh, updates to the county commission. And once we get to, so far into it, if we do receive the grant, we'll obviously work with the people who may be eligible to get those projects uh, in the pipeline and see what projects are going to be funded. And at that point, it, you can contact either the mayor's office, which would be at 615-374-2461, or you can contact whoever the grant administrator is going to be at that point. Uh, we're still very early in the project, so we don't have our consultants lined up yet. That is what part of putting out the request for qualifications and then going to a professional services selection committee will do. We will pick the, the consultant, that being a grant administrator, plus, as Ms. Leonard said, a housing inspector to do the inspection on the houses and help us pick what projects are going to be done and what the cost is going to be. So again, I want to thank anybody who's watching online or is watching this later on uh, YouTube. Uh, if you are watching this either on Facebook sometime later or you're watching it on YouTube, I would ask that you please subscribe to the county's uh, YouTube channel and click the notification bell so you receive notifications when we post new videos. All commissions, committee, board meetings and whatnot are streamed live via Facebook and posted later on YouTube. So if you click the notification bell after you subscribe, you'll be notified of any new videos posted. And then uh, we're also going forward, we're gonna try to do other videos, um, maybe some more informational videos as we learn how to do maybe some video production better or working with someone will try to post more videos there. So again, if you have any questions, you can contact the mayor's office at 615-374-2461. All right, thank you for watching and uh, we look forward to hopefully getting this grant and working on that, these projects as we go forward. Thank you.